Just gonna give these some water this morning. These are peppers. We got a tray of snapdragons in the back there. These are um, pansies, and I'm not surprised at the poor germination. The seeds are about four years old. And that's eucalyptus. We've got shishito peppers on the left, and sugar rush peach habanero on the right. This is a tray of jalapenos, pumpkin spice jalapenos. Whoops. How if I watered the tray? This is status, which is a really nice cut flower. It dries really well as well. We've got some kale on the back here. And you see the yellowing on the leaves there? I just want to point this out because a lot of new growers, they get really nervous about this. So here, there we go. We've got this yellowing here. And that's okay. These are the cotyledons. They're not the real true leaves. Um, these are going to yellow and fall right off. This is a true leaf, true leaf, and you see the third one coming up right in the middle there. So what happens is, is the cotyledons come up um, and all brassicas look the same. So that's kale, but broccoli, cauliflower, um, cabbage, even radish put up the same cotyledons, which are the first leaves that come up and they will eventually yellow and fall off. There's no nutrient deficiency. You don't need to fertilize. It's perfectly okay. So it's perfectly normal for that to happen and you don't need to worry about it. Some of these peppers are looking really good. This one's looking really nice. It's in good shape. We're about to bump these up. I wanted to wait and see if we could get these guys to get some true leaves before I start pulling this apart. Some of them took their time coming together and then some of the pansies these are a cool wave pansy they look good some are bigger than others but we're gonna get them out of here I think these are these need a little more water so when I'm when I'm watering I like to water um, I flood it and let it soak it up for about five minutes and then when it's done soaking it up I uh, pour off all the excess because you don't want them sitting in water um, but you also don't want them super, super dry. So, and these are some uh, dwarf tomatoes. And you can see the cotyledon on the bottom of that one is also right here. See this? This is turning yellow. And that's okay. It's going to turn yellow. It's going to fall off. These are your real leaves. This is what you're worried about. And it's got nice coloring. We're not worried about it. These are ready to be fertilized. I'm not going to really fertilize them at this point because these blocks are nice and fresh and they've got compost in them. And so we're going to move down a rack here. And we've got some Italian parsley, which again, not the greatest germination, but older seed. These are a bunch of dwarf tomatoes that we planted together. This is older seed of Dianthus. So spotty germination, but still good. This here in the back is stock. And we've got some snapdragons here that have had problems um, getting rid of their seed coat. So we're actually gonna lose some of these, which is unfortunate. Um, they just, they had a bit of a problem, but it happens. Um, it's a humidity issue. So I'll probably start another tray and let's see if we can get some water in here. So we just flood the whole tray. These right here are bachelor buttons and they're one of the first foods for bees. Um, they bloom really, really early. These could actually go outside. If the snow would go away, they could go outside in a couple of weeks but um, we're still really buried in snow, so that's probably not going to happen. So, but that's just some of our seedlings. We've got lots more around um, on different racks. So these are actually all ready to bump up. See how they've got their true leaves here? So this is the cotyledon and this is the true leaf. These can be bumped up into bigger blocks. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody gets their true leaves before we start doing that. 
Hi everyone, it's Shannon with JNS King Family Farm. Welcome to the grow room in my basement. I am slowly potting up some uh, pepper plants today. Um, we had a round of the stomach flu this week, so everybody's been kind of, and uh, it's not been fun. I was the last one to get it, so after I was done cleaning up after everybody else, it was my turn. So I'm just getting going again, trying to catch up. And you never really do, do you? So anyways, so I am working on potting up some peppers. These, I've got Carolina Reaper and Trinidad Scorpion here. I hope everybody's having a great Easter weekend. I can't decide here whether it wants, it's an O, Shannon, Scorpion. <laughs> Um, I can't decide here whether it wants to be spring or winter, so it's like kind of snowing, but kind of sunny. It's really weird. Um, it hasn't been particularly pleasant. So I made some jam today. I made some fudge today. The kids are upstairs playing, so you'll hear stuff drop on the floor. Sorry. It's the way it is. Um, I don't know. Maybe you can't hear it. I can hear it. So... I'm just going to pull the tape off this tray from last year. It's like they know that I want quiet because they weren't doing that for the last hour. But they are now Carolina Reaper, Trinidad Scorpion. Just get this right on here before I get my hands all wet. These are actually doing really well. These are kind of squatty looking plants and they tend to be that way. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I have six of each. So they've actually... So anyways, so I'm just gonna make some soil blocks here, the two inch blocks. So they started these in the three quarter inch blocks and I'm gonna move them up into the two inch blocks and my mix is a little wet so it's not doing what I want it to do but anyways it's kind of sucking down to the bottom of the container which is a bit of a problem so unfortunately I have to kind of hand fill it one two three four a bit but they don't look too bad so of course you can't be quite there now you can see them it's kind of I thought I was gonna get ahead of stuff last week and basically I just lost my whole week to illness and uh, just trying to keep up so I thought I was gonna like organize stuff and uh, yeah that didn't happen so now that I've lost a week and I have a show I have a like a craft market on Saturday. I've kind of just had to let stuff go and, and deal with that. We've had a bunch of chicks hatch. We're still waiting on our rabbits. Two of them, I guess, decided that they didn't want to have babies. So they're going to get rebred. Um, they get three chances and that's it. Um, so, but another one, she's supposed to go today. So I'm kind of hoping that's what happens. Because I was kind of hoping for some bunnies for Easter. But it's not looking good. So, but she's nesting like crazy. And she's actually pulling fur. Whereas the other two, they made no, no indication at all to do that. So I've already pulled the nest boxes out. Because it's been 35, 35 days. So one of them will go in with the buck um probably tonight i'll put her in this afternoon and uh, the other one will go in in a couple days and uh try again maybe they'll like it when it's slightly warmer out so hopefully it certainly doesn't feel like april out there so what i'm doing here is when I do a bunch on a tray, now I want six of each. So what I'm going to do 
As I'm going to move two of these, which is easier than it looks. And we just put one. If they're super wet, sometimes I get out a spatula, which again, I haven't had a chance to organize, so I don't really know where that spatula is, but here we are. So we've got... six and I'm covered in mud. Okay, so Carolina Reapers go up there. So basically what I did is I did 10 and 10 and those didn't sprout. So I'm just going to take them apart like that. That didn't go either. And we're just going to tuck them in and that's it. But they've got nice little root systems on them. I'm pretty happy with that. So they're good looking plants. They're really healthy. The last time I grew these, I had a massive aphid problem in the house and um, everything was just coated in aphids. I don't know where they came from. Probably came in on some soil that I had purchased. And it was just so obnoxious to keep them healthy. I kind of, I, I took a year off from doing them. So this year I'm going to try them again. Hopefully there's some interest in them. Um, people are starting to get more into novelty type stuff. Um, around here, most people, they just want green peppers. That's it. And so I do a lot of Cali Wonderful they're popular, they do well. Um, it is harder to get peppers to turn and ripen here. So, unless you've got a greenhouse or some way to extend your season, these are not as popular, but I like growing things that are a little bit harder. See that one? kind of has some pale leaves and I'm not sure about it but we're gonna put it in here and see what happens probably enjoy being bumped up it was the option of either fertilizing again or bumping them up and it's time to bump them up and these would have to be bumped up anyways there's lots of other stuff that I've had to to bump up into a bigger container um, simply because spring has not arrived this year it's just not coming and um, we still have like a foot and a half snow outside. Now, if I had not started the plants in preparation of planting them at this point, um, it would be gorgeous out there and I would be able to plant all the things and I wouldn't have any plants. So that's kind of the options. So that's where we're at. And it's a risk and I take it every year and that's what it is. And oh well. So that's those plants, and I will just tuck them there, and be out of trays. I found a stash of trays. I'm pretty sure I'd seen them somewhere. So these are habaneros and campanaghi peppers. And hopefully I've got enough soil mix here. I think so. That's the sun trying to come back out. Try and get them on there fairly straight. A bit squishy. 
Let's see what we got here. Some of these germinated really late. One of them's just germinating now, but a lot of them just, they need a new. They need a bigger pot. That's where we're at. So I usually bump up my tomatoes and peppers anyways, but a lot of stuff, um, things like kale and that would go out in a three quarter inch block. But unfortunately, we just, we don't have the weather for it this year. Although I'm really excited to say that my spinach has sprouted in the high tunnel. So um, we'll keep a, keep an eye on that. I need two more. Two. Hear the vacuum on that. Okay, so two of them are going that way. They're fairly stable when you get them together. If you've compressed them well enough, they they hold up pretty well to some movement. All right, that's the habaneros. I'm gonna move those. No, I'm gonna toss them back in. I think I've got just enough soil mix for this. So our dwarf tomatoes are looking really good. Um, I'm really, really happy with them. And um, this is some of them right here. And I'll talk about them in a minute. They've, they've come along really, really well. Um, I think they're very obviously dwarf plants. Um, I'm really excited to grow some of them out. Um, I was going to bump them up into two inch blocks, but I don't have enough, I have enough mix here. And it's good Friday, so I can't go buy anything anyways, which is fun. Things just did not happen this week. I didn't do errands. I didn't. I didn't go out. It was not. Yeah. <laughs> it was not the week for that. So tomorrow after my market, I'm going to do a few errands and brave the crazy that is the Saturday of a long weekend because everybody is going to behave tomorrow like the world is ending and the stores are never going to be open again. Uh, normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare go shopping on a Saturday of a long weekend. That's the way it worked out. And I am not making a special trip to town either. Fuel is just way too expensive for that. So we're kind of at this impasse where I just have to. Deal with it. Our girls are laying eggs like crazy too. This mix is so wet. All right. So 
some of these guys have just got a fantastic root system. I'm going to stick it over on this one. It's just like playing, oh, there's a stick in this block. That's why this is so hard to, this is why we like to sift because there's like this little twig. And usually I get it all, not always though. <laughs> Spring is coming though. I mean, I know it's technically spring, but if you look at my window, it doesn't look like spring. It's there's just so much snow and it just keeps coming down. It was supposed to rain yesterday, get rid of some of it. It didn't really, it was supposed to be warmer today, get rid of some of it. It's just not. Um, now next week's supposed to be really good. So it doesn't look like what we're going to get is a good sap run. Um, if you're vacuuming the trees, that's, that's different. But for us, it just doesn't run as well. It doesn't drip into the buckets the same when all of a sudden it's just going to warm up and we're not going to get to cold nights. And I uh, so I think, I don't think we're going to get the sap run we were really hoping for, which is kind of unfortunate. So we're going to have to be uh, careful with how much of the syrup that we get this year that we use. Um, I did have a look on our shelf. We do have... I don't like this block. This one's really sloppy. We do have, still have probably the better part of a gallon. Um, maybe. Um, but the kids, they, pancakes are their favorite food. Pancakes, French toast, that type of stuff. So we tend to really go through it. So I may purchase from a local producer here. We have a local producer that purchases or uh, that uh, does organic. Um, organic maple syrup. So we'll probably purchase from her. Okay. The rag for drying the hands is gone. Like everything. There it is. No, that's not it. Everything is just so disorganized literally just trying to you know make sure things get watered and don't die and I still managed to kill a few seedlings just because I didn't I wasn't able to keep up with them so that's okay we've got time that's why we start early as well so we can restart some stuff if we have to oops habanero Francisca. And the next one is Campanaki. That's kind of it, guys. That's all I'm doing is just trying to keep up. Um, it's really busy for us. If you're, I mean, if you're a home grower, you've got lots of time. Now's the time to make sure that you're starting. If you're in my area, um, where our last frost is mid, uh, mid to late May, now's the time to get your peppers started. Um, you can also start tomatoes. If you're looking for bigger plants, you probably could start tomatoes in the next couple, couple of weeks and still be okay. Um, because we've still got quite a ways to go before um, our, we can really put them out. So, and peppers, you don't want to rush get putting them out. If you put them out too early, they just stunt and they don't do anything. So it's really important not to force that. So that's my blocking mix, that's my peppers. So these are the dwarf tomatoes. These short ones here are the dwarf tomatoes. These are regular cherry tomatoes. And you can just, look at the height difference. And I'm like, these are just obviously dwarf tomatoes. And I'm really excited about them. I've got really great germination, like basically 100%. So I'm super excited to be growing these this year. I'm gonna offer some to the public. I've had a few people request and I think that, I think they'll be great. I think if you, if you don't have a lot of space 
particular, if you're in an apartment or something and you've got room for a gallon pot, you could grow one of these. Are you going to get gallons of tomatoes that you can preserve and, you know, put up and all of that? Absolutely not. This is, that's not what this is. This is something that you can have tomatoes to um, learn how to grow, uh, get better at it, have tomatoes for your salad, um, and, and work on some skills, um, in growing and have a little bit more control over the food and, and the way it's grown. So I think they're a cool little thing. I can't wait to see how they develop out. Um, I'm going to bump these up. I gotta get some more soil and then I'm going to, uh, mixed up. I have to get some more soil mixed up and then I'm going to bump these up into two inch blocks, I think. So, but there's just, yeah, these just did so well. And they're just such a nice, sturdy, stocky little plant. They're great. So, and they smell, oh, they smell like summer. Tomatoes just smell like summer to me. It's such a great smell. So, and then I've got some bumblebee mix, cherry tomatoes. These are Napa Chardonnay cherry tomatoes. And that's why they're significantly bigger. These are a standard cherry tomato. They, they will grow eight, 10 feet if you let them. Whereas these are designed to stay at 18 inches. And I think they're, I think they're really cool. I think the dwarf tomato project is really neat. And, uh, so that's what they look like. So that's what we're up to today. It's not super exciting. We're still trying to recover a bit. Um, nobody's eating a whole lot. So, but we just have to keep plugging away because spring is on its way. Um, even if it doesn't look like it, it is on its way and we have to keep working. So, um, I'm going to get through these and then I'm going to try and organize a little bit, I think this weekend, if I can. Um, so thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we'll see you here next time.